9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top Allumage Vulcain. Allumage de EAP, décollage. Propulsion nominale, tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Oh, we have just seen Ariane 5 disappear into space. Do stay with us, everyone, because what's going to happen next is as crucial as the launch. This is, of course, the moment when the two satellites, GSAT-24 and MIRSAT-3D, are placed into orbit. David, you are our space expert tonight. Ariane 5 still has a long way to travel before the separation of the two satellites. Where and when will this happen, and how many kilometers away from the launch site? Yes, we're, we're not quite there yet, yes. Um, MIASAT 3D we will separate from the launcher in about 30 minutes, uh, 1,200 kilometers out of Kenya. And uh, GSAT 24 will separate about 10 minutes later above the Pacific Ocean, about 38,800 kilometers. I imagine that everything is minutely calculated and programmed so that the satellites find their position themselves. So what can you tell me, David, is the role of the team in Kourou at this stage? Yes, indeed, as I said, everything is controlled by the onboard computer on the launcher. So the team in Kourou, uh, this is what we are hearing right now, they are receiving data from the launcher through the tracking stations and they are checking that everything is, uh, accord is going according to, to what was foreseen. Well, I'm just focusing on those images, incredible yeah, images, incredible. I'm just uh, watching. So it was really impressive. It's really night, 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 nice night. Yes, yes, it's, it's uh, so clear dreamy. skies. Just before the, the satellites find their, their fun. I'm interrupted because we, are, we, we have are video, hearing. everything is okay. Yes. Uh, before the satellites find their position in orbit, uh, 36,000 kilometers above our head, David, what should we be focusing on? So right now, yeah. yes, we, we just EAP. had the separation of the boosters. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. It's incredible. incredible. Yes, yeah. we have very good images tonight. We have. Uh, That's the first time we see it skies. so clearly. The That's first time incredible. It really is. So the launcher is at an altitude of about 70 kilometers and traveling about 7,000 kilometers per hour right now. We will also. We've just heard the, um, the DDO has announced the uh, the fairing separ separation. Yes. So why we don't need it anymore? Now the, the launcher has now reached an altitude uh, around 110 kilometers where the atmosphere is really thin and therefore we get rid of the fairing which was there to protect the satellites uh, from the atmosphere and from the liftoff. So it's not already done, I'm confused. It's not already done, it will happen. It, we, it should happen shortly, yes. It should happen shortly and you have an earpiece. An earpiece. And yes. so you're directly connected to Kourou. So you have... There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Well, for all of you who have just joined us on Road to Space, the Ariane 5 rocket has just left the Guiana Space Center in Kourou three minutes ago. And tonight we have two very special passengers on board, one from Miasat, Malaysia's first satellite operator, and the second one from New Space India Limited, which is a public enterprise under the Indian Ministry of Space. And in 20 minutes, MIASAT 3D will be the first released into space. David, can you tell us a bit more about its future position? La propulsion est nominale. Yes. So MIASAT 3D will, will be in geostationary uh, position, 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. Um, the satellite will be fixed uh, with respect to the ground, as I explained before. And so it will be at, in what we call the 91.5 degree east orbital slot which uh, if you look at the world map, you will see that 91.5 degree longitude east is uh, over the Indian Ocean, about a thousand kilometers from Kuala Lumpur. So it will be in a perfect position to, to, to serve Pilotage Malaysia and Southeast nominal. Asia. Okay, MISAT 3D is part of the MISAT family. We had MIS 1, 2 and 3A. Launched all by Ariane Space in 1996 and 
2014. It's a long time partnership between your client, between the client and Iron Space. Yes, indeed, uh, Iron Space has had a very uh, strong relationship with the Asia Pacific region for years, for decades. And Miasat and Malaysia are indeed uh, very important customers to us, yes. Miasat 3D and GSAT 24 are still continuing their journey into space on board Ariane 5. Let's now have a look at the screen and some incredible images we have of today's liftoff from the Guiana Space Center, which happened just a couple of minutes ago. I'm going to ask you, David, probably to comment on them. Yeah. So we can see, we can see on, the, on the screen what we have because we don't have this replay right now, but we have on the right. So this is the 3D images. Yeah, so this is the, the situation of the launcher right now with the, the main stage uh, that is uh, functioning right now and that will continue to, to function for a few minutes, yes. And for the people that are watching us, all the information we see, they see on the low part of the screen. What is this? So yes, you have there the, the, the altitude uh, of the launcher at this time. So you see it's about 160 kilometers. The distance from the launch pad, uh, which is about yes, 700 kilometers. And, uh, and the speed, which uh, right now is uh, getting close to uh, five kilometers per second, yes. Well, we'll see the replay um, later on in the program, but Ariane 5 will have a long flight tonight, as I said before. Together, we will follow all the different stages together until the separation of both satellites, satellites and the acquisition of Miasat 3D in approximately 45 minutes. Earlier, we mentioned this flight was the first of the year for Ariane 5. So, David, how many flights does Ariane 5 approximately make per year? Well, in, in past years, Ariane 5 uh, has flown on average uh, six times per year. Of course, with the recent uh, COVID crisis, the, the launch rate has decreased, and we had three launches in, in 2020 and three more in, in 2021. Thanks, uh, by the way, to the big effort of all the teams in this difficult situation. Of course, Ariane 5 is not the only rocket to take off from the Guiana Space Center every year. How many rockets take off from Kourou annually? Well, in, in recent years, again, with, with COVID, we have had about seven launches per year. Uh, but before that, we had as many as 11 or 12 launches per year. Wow, OK. Well, when it comes to large spaceports, there are often different advantages relating to both the site and the location. But what about Kourou? Why is it one of the most efficient and effective launch sites in the world? Well, with its location, which is very close to the equator, Kourou uh, offers the launchers an extra push when going to space, when going towards the east, thanks to the rotation of the Earth. So this is a great advantage when going into geostationary orbit, like it is the case today. This push, together with the low inclination orbits that can be reached, is a great advantage for the customers because they will use less fuel to, to go into orbit. And also the geography makes it uh, possible to launch towards the north, towards the east. So all kinds of orbits are, avail are possible to be reached uh, from Kourou. Okay, and David, while, while you were explaining us, we hear the DDO announcing uh, Natal acquisition. Just a word about that, please. Yes, yeah, so Natal, as you see on the, on the screen, is uh, a tracking station that is located in, on, in the east of uh, Brazil. And so this is the tracking station that is now receiving the information from the launcher. Again, as we move east, different tracking stations will follow the launcher along the way. And so at the time we are talking, uh, the rocket in the sky does not look anything like uh, the one we saw uh, leaving Kourou eight minutes ago. Uh, it has now separated from the main core stage. Can you explain us what it means? Yes, yeah, so the, the DDO just announced yes, yeah. the fact that the, the main stage has been separated. And he just ju just announced yeah. that the upper stage engine has been ignited. Brilliant. So yeah, as we go along, of course, the, and the stages are, are used up, the, the propellant is used up, the, the stages are, are separated. Uh, right now, the launcher configuration that you see on the screen is about 30 tons uh, to be compared to the 775 tons that we had at the, times of lift, at the time of liftoff. Quite incredible. So the higher we go, the, the lighter, lighter, lighter. It will be. the lighter yes. the lighter you get um, we will are we just hear uh, the last of Galliot signal if I'm right I'm just looking uh, 
No, we are no. Yeah, we lost. We lost Galliot's signal. What does it mean? Does it mean the rocket is out of sight, uh, out of ear, out of connection? With Kuru, yes, that's right. Galio is the tracking station in Kuru. And of course, as we, move, as we move towards the east, at some point, we are no longer visible from Kuru. Um, but again, this is not an issue because we have other tracking stations along the way that will continue to follow the launcher. 